tuning in to the 2020-2021 Conejo Valley Unified School District's Focus on the Arts program. This exciting arts adventure is funded by two grants from generous partners, including Access Arts, an initiative of TO Arts, along with Conejo Schools Foundation. Have fun, and remember, you can work at your own pace. Don't forget to use that pause button. And this is family fun for the whole family, so gather everyone around and you can all work together. And if you don't have the materials, you can improvise. That means use what you got. And no matter what, remember, even though we're apart, we're connected by art. Hi, I'm Julie with Art Makes You Smart. And today we're here to talk about French Impressionistic artist Claude Monet. He was a leader in the Impressionism movement. Let's learn that word Impressionism together. All right, you ready to say it out loud? Impressionism. And then let's put it all together. Impressionism. Good job. Also here at Art Makes You Smart, we have secured an interview with Claude Monet, interviewed by Professor McCarty. Let's take a look. Hello, Monsieur Monet. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. But of course, anything for my friend, Professor McCarty. Oh, well, the children would like to know a little bit about your life as an Impressionist artist. Oui, 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 yes, I would love to talk with the children. What would they like to know? Well, first, can you tell us a little bit about your childhood and where you were born? Well, I was born in France, which you call Olono, because it is the most fabulous country in all of Europe. It was here in Normandy where I grew up. As a child, did you know you wanted to be an artist? Yes. In fact, I was always drawing these, uh, what you call them, cartoons. They are what we call caricatures, exaggerated drawings. Mon père, my father, thought I was quite good at drawing and thought I should try the painting. And so, he sent me to art school here in Paris. Well, we can see now that you are a famous painter, so that was a good choice by your father. Oui, oui. I do enjoy painting, and I have been lucky enough to be able to sell my paintings and support my family. Did you become famous right away? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, for example, this is one of my first paintings, and it was not liked by the critics. They felt it was unfinished. Look here. Do you see these brush strokes? They did not like the look of this. But this is what I enjoy doing, and I was not alone. It is the name of this painting, Impression Sunrise that gave the name to a new movement in the history of painting called Impressionism. And my fellow artists were doing it as well. Did these artists become famous too? Yes, my friend Manet is quite famous. He is the Impressionist known for using black in his paintings. And of course, there is Auguste Renoir he has a knife of beauty. And Monsieur Degas, who loves to paint the ballerinas. Together, we were called the Impressionists. Here is my Impressionist painting by the sea. Can you see my many, many brushstrokes and how I show the light in my subject? Yes. In fact, I can almost see the sunlight shining on this rock that is coming out of the sea. I also love all the colors you have shown here. Yes, this is something I love to do. And I have a friend to remind me how to do it. You know him, no? His name is Roy G. Biv. I did not know he was a real person. 
<laughs> no, Professor, he is not real. But his name does remind me that if I follow the rainbow, I will always have success with my paintings. Look here, Professor. You will see how I use the color. In this painting here, we have red. And orange. And yellow. Green. Blue. Indigo. And down here is the violet. So, is it your use of color? that made you so famous. Yes, but can I tell you my secret? The children would love to know a secret. I do not paint objects. Instead, I do a little square of blue, an oblong of pink, and here a streak of yellow. Well then, we must have a closer look at these brush strokes. They are amazing. Here is a painting I did outside of my wife and son. It was painting outside that truly made me want to paint the way a bird sings. When you look at the world like that, even ordinary things like grain stacks, what you call haystacks, become Beautiful. I want you to paint them in all the light and all the seasons. Here is one in spring. And then summer. In autumn. And even the cold of winter. I have always been interested in how light affects the beautiful colors of nature. After selling many of my paintings, I finally was able to buy a home here in Giverny. We have big, wonderful gardens, lots of trees, and even a pond where we have the water of the leaves. You must love it here. Yes, I do. This Japanese bridge and pond have been the inspiration for many of my paintings. Was the bridge your favorite subject to paint? Well, I did love to paint the bridge, but can I tell you a secret? Another secret, Monsieur Monet? Yes, please tell us. I love to paint the water lilies that float under the bridge even more. In fact, we built this big studio just so I could paint this giant painting of the water lilies. And now it is in a museum here. I keep painting the water lilies even though I am losing my eyesight. So first, critics did not like your impressionistic style, and now your eyesight is failing? Nothing is going to stop you from being a famous painter, is it? No, Professor. I am lucky to have found my passion in life. I hope there are some children out there who desire to become artists. And to you I say, when you go out to paint, Try to forget what objects you have before you. A tree, a house, a field, whatever. Merely think, here is a square of blue, here an oblong of pink, and here a streak of yellow. Monsieur Monet, thank you so much for spending the time with us today and to tell us about your most wonderful life. But of course, it was mon plaisir. Au revoir et merci mes enfants. Mwah!
Hi, boys and girls. Today we're going to do a great project inspired by Claude Monet, the French Impressionistic artist. The painting behind me is called the Japanese Bridge. My favorite part of the painting are actually the water lilies underneath the bridge. And today's project is going to be a water lily. And this water lily is actually made out of two coffee filters. No one would ever know. Don't tell anyone. Let's do it. Let's get started. We're going to make our lily flower first. Before we get started, let's put your coffee filter on top of some scratch paper to protect your table. Now hold your coffee filter down with one hand and use your crayons to draw the center of your flower. Start from the middle and work outwards. We want to use warm colors on our lily flower. Do you remember what the warm colors are? Think of the sun. So yellow and oranges. And think of flowers like pinks and oranges and yellows. When you're done with half of the filter, turn it around and do the other half, making sure to hold on to that flower nice and tightly. Time to add our watercolors. This is where those scratch papers beneath your filter really make a difference because you're going to see the watercolor is going to go through your filter. Those warm colors of pinks, oranges, and yellows are going to look amazing. Great, let's move on to our lily pad. Put your coffee filter on some more scratch paper. Now choose some colors for your lily pad. Greens, yellows, blues, those all work great. Hold down your coffee filter really well, and then draw some circular marks with your crayons. When you're finished with half of your coffee filter, turn it around and then do the other half. Fill it in pretty well, but remember we're also going to use watercolor later. Before we start the watercolor, let's cut out a notch in our filter. Cutting from the outside towards the center, we're going to cut out a pie-shaped wedge and then pull it out. We're going to use cool colors with our watercolors, just like we did with our crayons. The crayons are going to resist the watercolor and give it a nice, interesting texture. When you're done painting your lily pad, put both your flower and lily pad coffee filters off to the side to dry. It looks amazing, good job. Time to make our pond. Our pond will be the watercolor paper. We're going to use crayons to draw some squiggly lines. Some of the lines will be short, and some of them will be long, and some of them will be thick, and some of them will be thin. You want to change it up. That keeps everything interesting. When you've made the lines that you like in terms of the size and shape, Go back and make them thicker and stronger. This will help later when we add watercolor. The more crayon you put down, the better it will resist and push the watercolor away where we don't want it. Continue this process with two, three, or maybe even four more colors. It's now time to fill in that area around the crayons with watercolor. It's best if you can go around the crayons because that will keep the crayon colors bright. But if you do happen to go over it, that's okay because the crayons will push that watercolor away. That's called resist. The wavy lines look so good. It looks like ripples in the water. Let's put it all together. Watch closely. Fold the coffee filter in half. Fold it in half one more time. And finally, one last fold. You now have kind of a skinny pie shape or triangle shape. Use a pencil or a marker to make a dot in the center of that triangle. Now draw a curved rainbow line from that dot 
up to the corner on both sides. You've made kind of a curvy V. We're going to cut from the corners of our triangle towards that center dot on both sides to remove that curvy V from the copy filter. Once it's cut out, open up the copy filter and you have a pretty flower. Now we're going to fold the lily pad so that the edges of the lily pad curl up. We're going to use the dot, 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 not a lot method to add some glue to the back of our lily pad and then press it down. Once more with the flower. One, two, three. That's all the glue you need. And let's push that down too, right in the center of our lily pad. It looks great, good job. Don't forget to sign your work. Hi guys, today we're gonna to do a project inspired by Claude Monet, the famous French impressionistic artist. Do you know this painting back here? It's called the Japanese Bridge. And we're gonna do one just like it. Well, not quite. We're gonna make it our own. We're gonna use watercolors and the resist technique. And we're gonna use our own colors. Let's do it. All right, let's get started guys. Begin by taping down the edges of your watercolor paper. This will keep the paper from moving around as you're drawing and as you're painting but also it will give us a nice clean edge when we take it off at the very end. It's gonna look great. Let's begin our drawing by first placing your hand along the bottom edge of your paper and drawing a dot with your crayon. Now draw a zigzag line from that dot all the way to the bottom of your paper. You want that zigzag to get wider and wider as you get towards the bottom. You're going to make that zigzag line a little thicker towards the bottom of your paper and a little thicker in the middle and the least thick at the very top. Now we're ready to draw our lily pads. We're gonna draw them in the imaginary triangle that we created by our zigzag line. The lily pads at the bottom of the page will be the biggest because they are the ones that are closest to you. In the middle, they're going to be medium size, and at the very top, they're just going to be smaller and smaller until they get to be just little dots. This will give the effect that the lily pads at the top of the pond are further away. Now it's time to draw our bridge. Choose any color you want and draw three rainbow lines like this. Now we're gonna draw the supports. They are straight up and down lines. Do one in the middle and one on each side. We're gonna add a second support. In the middle, it's gonna be right next to the first line. And on the sides, they're gonna be a little further away from the first line. Let's go back in and make all the lines of our bridge thicker. Now choose a color that's darker than your bridge color for the shadows. The shadows will be underneath each of the rainbow lines and on the left hand side of the straight up and down supports. Notice that the shadows are not going through the support lines. And after you're done with the inside of your bridge, don't forget to add a shadow underneath the rainbow line at the very bottom. Now the supports on the right of each section are actually behind the bridge. 
So we're gonna add some shadows that go across these supports. The red arrows will show you where we need to add those extra tiny shadows across the supports on the right in each section. Good job. Time to paint the pond. We're going to use the watercolors in that same imaginary triangle around our zigzag line. The colors we choose will be the darkest at the top of the triangle, the medium tone in the middle of the triangle, and the lightest at the front or the bottom of the triangle. It works best if you can paint around your zigzag line and your lily pads because that will make the crayon colors the brightest. But if you go over it, that's okay too because the crayon will resist and push away that watercolor paint. Good job. Now we're going to use the wet on wet technique to paint our background. To use the wet on wet technique, you want to use a lot of water in that first layer. It's always best to start with your lightest color. Let's do one section at a time. On the left-hand side of your paper, paint the area above your bridge and the sections of the bridge below that area. The second color that you add will hopefully bloom. That means that the paint will spread on its own because of the water from the first layer. If it doesn't, that's okay. You can spread it with your brush as well. Keep going with your second color until you have it the way you want it. Don't worry about putting in a lot of detail right now. We're gonna be adding some more layers to these trees later. Fill in above the bridge and in the sections of the bridge in the same tones because they should all represent the same trees. Good job. Let's do the same thing for the right side of our paper. Start again with your lightest color. Keep it nice and wet. Fill in above the bridge and in the sections of the bridge just below it. Go back in with that second color if it blooms, that's great. If it doesn't, spread it around until you have it the way you want it. Now we have to do the area below the bridge on both the left and right side. Good job. Now we need to paint the middle of our paper above the bridge and in the bridge sections. Let's make this area a little darker than the two sides. This will give the illusion of depth to your painting. This means that that area will seem further away. Remember to go in with that second color and hopefully once again we'll get that bloom effect. It's so cool when we do. Great! It's time to paint the water lilies. Choose a color that's different from the pond color so it will stand out. Make the lilies towards the bottom bigger and then make them smaller and smaller as they get further away towards the top of the triangle. Good job. Now that our background is dried up a little bit, we can add some more details. We're going to paint bushes along the edges of our pond. Because the area is dry, our paint will not spread. And this is what we want when we're trying to do small detail. We're going to do the same for the detail above the bridge and in the in-between sections of the bridge. You can use light colors, like highlights on the trees, or you can use dark colors for the shadow spaces between the leaves. Do this for both sides of your paper. You can do more than one layer if you want. Just remember to let each layer dry before you add details with the next layer. Otherwise, your colors will 
blend together and become muddy. Great, we're ready for the final step. We're going to pull the tape off our paper. Remember to go really slow, otherwise you will rip your paper. If it rips a little, don't worry. That's called a deckled edge. And some artists do that on purpose. You might have to peel off the tape in more than one section. That's okay. It happens to everyone. Look what a clean, crisp edge we got from using that tape. Great job. And don't forget to sign your work. And remember, art makes you smart.